was pretty cool, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was awesome. So we we made the 404 yeah, in the was, end. It was a ruse all along. <laughs> it was a real ship. So. <laughs> Look cool, though. I yeah. like it. Yeah, those trainers are always super cool to see the, the artwork from both yeah, your teams. Yeah, really good job of kind of showing off what, what I think everyone's kind of done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we should probably get on with the show. Uh, this is Ship Talk, uh, where we are going to talk about a variety of things today. Uh, my name's John Crew. I'm the Vehicle Director here at CIG. Uh, I'm Ben Curtis, and I'm the Vehicle Art Director at CIG. And I'm Paul Jones, Art Director. So the, the 400i, it's a Constellation competitor. And we've got a few of these ships in this category across the board. We have the Constellation, we have the Corsair, and now we have the 400i. And the 400i has a few interesting features that makes it a compelling choice over the others. So being an origin ship, it's obviously very visually sleek and fast, but also it can carry cargo and a, a vehicle at the same time. Size-wise, there's obviously a big Gap in the range, uh, we have the, the 100 series at the start, so it jumps up to the 300 series, then there's the big jump to the 600 series, and then another jump to the 890, so finding a space for this was, was fairly easy size-wise. I think it fills the gap quite nicely. So in terms of the process, um, uh, normally what happens is we've, you know, we, we assign it to one concept artist, and we start the ball rolling, so it's really just a, a game of sort of exploration at this point. You know, it's fast and loose. You know, we always have a timeline uh, for each concept. And so it's, uh, you know, the pressure is always on, basically. Uh, it doesn't matter how many ships we've done, there's always that pressure to get it done and hit and hit the sort of key points. And so at this point of exploration, it's really sort of uh, loosey-goosey in terms of figuring out ideas, looking at shapes, looking at silhouettes, and sort of not locking yourself into uh, a line of thinking. It's basically, you know, we'll look at different ships. So we'll, some will be more influenced by the 600i, some more by the 100i, and then we'll sort of do a mix and match. And so, like I said, sometimes you don't quite hit it on that, on that sort of, you know, I think like right at the yeah. beginning. Yeah, when, when you've got like a, a well-established manufacturer, it's, it's really beneficial because you, you kind of, you, you know, you have that, to pull from, but you also don't want to get into the point where it's just a scaled down 600 or a scaled up, do you know what I mean? You kind yeah. of like, you don't want them all just to look like they're the same ship, just slightly different variants. Yeah. Uh, so I think the 400 is, um, it certainly stands out within the lineup, but it's clearly an origin ship. And I think uh, it's, I mean, cause we, we sort of follow the, man, you know, sort of car manufacturers, don't we, in mm. terms of uh, the brand, it's sort of expanding the brand, Sort of the brand also develops over time, so we have like a double. Yeah. You know, since the start of the project, Origin has sort of slightly changed its style a little bit, um, and then like say, yeah, you don't want to, you don't want just a mini six hundred. Yeah. Even though there's a part of me that would just be like, right, let's do a mini six hundred. I do really like the six hundred. Like, yeah, yeah, the six hundred. Got it. And even that, even at this point, I kept sort of coming back to one original sketch that had been done for the. Oh, what was it? I think it was one hundred i. Yeah. There was a little thumbnail. Um, you know, it's literally in my head. It's about that big, and the sketch is just teeny weeny. I was like, oh, I kind of want a version like this. This looks kind of cool. And and so basically, in the end, I just went in and and kick bashed um, some ideas together. So this was this was before my time on the ship team. So it's quite interesting oh, really? to, to learn a bit more about the the process. I've, Oh, yeah, a lot of the, that's a great shift. My favourite one, Paul. <laughs> a lot of the uh, the little concept thumbnails get. If you see one, because we often show them in Jump Point magazines afterwards, mm -hmm. after a ship's being released, you see all the early sketches, and people probably noticed like, that hundred eye uh, mm -hmm. thumbnail that we did that was rejected for the hundred, yeah. but then has come round for this, and you never know what might happen with ones that we didn't choose for this one. Yes, Could have yes, they might appear in future ships. So ultimately, this was, this is what, uh, you know, this is like a visual that I did. So it's, you know, throwing together a bunch of shapes, uh, what we call kit bashing from different models, because it's quick. As an art director, you've always got, it feels like you've got zero time to get, yeah. to get a result. So it's, how do you get, uh, 
provide a visual that people can understand <clears throat> in the uh, shortest time possible. And so my understanding of the ship was it was a luxury, a luxury explorer. Yeah. And so you can see here that that's why there's a swimming pool in there and a, and a deck. You know, the part of the process is that we show it to Chris Roberts uh, to get sort of direction and feedback. And Chris was quite adamant that this, this was going to be you know, an, an explorer. It wasn't, it yeah. wasn't just you know, a, a small scale party ship. It was, you know, it needed to have a function. Yeah. It needed to be a competitor to that scale and, and kind of role of ship. Yeah. You know, we did quite a lot of interior investigations and, um, you know, just sort of looking at, looking at ways of arranging space within that ship. Because like we said earlier, even though the ship looks big, it's actually really tight. Like it's like, yeah. it's a lot harder than you think to achieve everything that now star citizens expect to have in their ships and yeah. all the components and all it's the functionality. A very streamlined sort of two decks or really like one deck that stretches most of the lower section and the, the upper bit which had the pool in it. Yes. Um, maybe one day you'll get Maybe we get the pool. You'll get your pool one day. So in terms of this process, what happens is we finish the concept or what we what we think is finished and then get Chris sign off. Do a couple of paint schemes and then it Done passes over to yeah. at your department. Yeah, so so from the concept, um, normally you know the we'll kind of take it as quickly as possible in, into the editor, and that just allows us to um, kind of really get a good sense of the space from from the player and making sure that um, you know everything that we think we need is actually going to fit, um, making sure the components go through, and like like we were saying earlier. A lot of the time is um, what a ship starts off with its kind of um, paper design, you know, its official design document, to the point where we're actually kind of uh, working on the ship. The requirements can change. That might, you know, that's not just because you know, we're like, oh, well, we'll add this and add that to it. it it's sometimes you know, a balance pass has been done in the game, and we've realised that you know a certain ship item, you know, a certain size shield might not be suitable for it anymore, or um, it might be just that, yeah, we think well actually it'd be great if we could fit the x1 in it because it's kind of the perfect mm -hmm. ship for it um but that wasn't like i say on the the original plans so yeah i mean like like you were saying the the ship is kind of a, a hard split with its its two floors so we've, we've kept sort of all of engineering and cargo and storage and everything downstairs still and then the kind of the habs and the the, the crew space is all upstairs with the, the bridge obviously once we kind of get that white boxing game, we then start just making sure that um, we can fit everything in we need. We also, that's uh, the point that we kind of really start internally showing that ship to everyone that, that yeah. is invested in it, and, and you know, including Chris and um, you know, everyone that, that needs to kind of have a say. And one of the kind of things that Chris was really keen for, although he didn't want this ship to be a kind of luxury party ship, he did want it to feel origin. I think originally we had like the lift Yeah, there's, there was a smaller, trying not to do hand movements too much. Really. Yeah. There was just a single small platform just for the crew that yeah, went straight up lots, into Yeah. Uh, in, it, into I mean, the that nose. whole area was quite tricky, wasn't it? Because there yeah. was the um, docking ring, the docking collar, yep. yeah. the lift. Yeah. And then there was a, an entrance to the front and an entrance you to had, the back. Yeah, originally, I think on the concept, you, you walked in through the docking collar um, and like you say, the floor was a lift, you had the collar on the side and then doors either side, which took you to like a little antechamber that had the suit lockers in, yeah, I think it was. At the front yeah. And yeah, the, the, the first bit of feedback from Chris was the entrance doesn't really feel very grand for an origin ship. Um, and that's when we kind of introduced the, the stairs and the, the kind of like the big, not marble staircase, but that, that sort of idea that you were kind of like, you know, walking into the ship felt a little bit more grand. That had some knock-ons to the, the kind of interior space as well because you know obviously making a, a one person or two person lift is something that, that's relatively small it's, it's, it's fits in a nice tight space um, but when you've got a set of stairs that need to fit or need to have a decent height change um, that requires a lot more space so what we ended up doing was kind of opening up this first chamber you walk into and then rather than being divided into separate rooms that kind of whole space kind of acts as the airlock and that's got everything that you need when you first enter the ship. Um, and I think it does, like I say, just that initial entrance feels quite yeah. nice now. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. we don't have a lot of ships like that anymore, but have the go up the front of it and yeah. inside it. Like yeah, that. I mean, we've obviously we've, we've got another one that we'll show after this. Yeah. 
But yeah, mo most of them, if they've got a ramp, it's, it's like cargo, isn't it? It's, it's yeah. pure function yeah. and, and not really... No, I think you guys have done a great job on this because it was pretty. it was tricky. You yeah. Know, I remember it at the time and you feel the time pressure. And, and then it was, it was yeah. when I was just starting on the team as well. So I was like coming in and be like, oh, Paul, what, do we, what do we do? Like, where, 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 where do we go? And it also, uh, I mean, it's also nice because it sort of dovetails with that original sketch, which yeah. has... There's an element there in that oh, thumbnail. There? Okay. Yeah, yeah, and I think... At the time, I sort of binned it off because I was yeah. just like, I don't, like, I'm sure I had some thoughts about it. I mean, everybody knows I've got a sort of 64 kilobit memory, so stuff kind of like gets lost yeah. after a short amount of time. But um, I think we did discuss it, but then, yeah, I was just like, no, let's just, let's just go, let's go simple. But yeah, yeah you guys did, did good stuff. Yeah, and then, then the next thing to tackle, like Paul was saying, was um, the, the kind of like the addition of the bike garage. Um, it, it, was a bit of a headache trying to kind of fit that in and the original plan that, that you know you can see is originally we were going to have it um at the back of the ship next to the cargo or right within the back of the cargo yeah room. within the cargo room um it it did fit um but it, it kind of brought up a few quirks with it yeah. i think um the you know there, there was a few different quirks from different departments so um from a design point of view I think we could only make it fit if you sent the bike up on its own, which was fine. But because the main entrance to the ship was at the, the front, it meant that yeah, you'd get off. You had to drive your bike onto this platform, get off your bike, send the bike up, run around to the front of the ship, run up the stairs. Yeah, and, and the and stairs just look at your bike. Opening isn't exactly like a super quick thing. So yeah. if you, you yeah, know, it just felt yeah. kind of like in terms of flow. Yeah, yeah it's like all right, it's... I need to quickly quickly get off planet, and you're like, oh, I'm click that. All right, okay, yeah, send that up. Oh, run. Yep, yeah, okay, you go. Yeah. A minute later or two minutes later, you're in you're in the seat ready to fly. Like I say, that was one of the, the issues we kind of hit. And then the other, I guess, um, issue was it just it started eating into the cargo space. So it meant that you couldn't once you had the cargo fully loaded, there was very little space for you to kind of traverse around the um, the cargo hold. Basically. You know, we, we had a number of kind of ideas we played with, and then uh, if you click on, yeah, we ended up um, basically putting it at the opposite end of the ship. Yeah. Now the nose, should we call it the mm -hmm. nose? Yeah, yeah the, nose. the nose now opens up and it's got like a nice little kind of dedicated X1 garage in there. It's a nice use of that kind of spine yeah, that was there originally. Yeah, there was nothing um, really. The, the gravity drive was there, yeah. but we kind of nudged that back a bit. Um, and I guess the mounts for the guns, but they they kind of still tucked out to the side a little bit. So yeah, yeah it was um, a better use of space because it was sort of, yeah, like you say, it had the gravity generator there and it had the suit lockers, but it was weird that you had to go through the airlock to get your suit and yeah. then back out. Um, so yeah, taking up that space was was much nicer. Um, and the other really good thing is all the controls for getting a new ship and doing this, they're all On. right right next to you. So you go yep. open this, open this. Yeah. And put your bike yeah. away. Yeah. And go up. And I think that's one of the kind of like um the, the like say the nice things of it is is you know, you can I guess ride up to your ship and it, it's just there, you send it up, straight up and, and yeah, there's no messing around. Um so yeah, that was one of the other challenges. And then to be honest, most of the the rest of the ship kind of went pretty much to, to plan in terms of, you know, what was on concept. I don't think there was any kind of real yeah. surprises. So, you know, now as, as you enter the ship and you come into the kind of like the main body, you're into engineering, this ship does have large shields. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that was, that was another thing to make it different. Um, obviously, we've made changes whilst during development to other ships and shields have changed. So it's not quite as unique as it was, um, but it's still very well shielded for its size. Uh, and the other cool thing about engineering is those rooms at the edge are cool, cool. Yeah. yeah. They're climate controlled, so uh, it's another nice little thing to play with, gives all the teams so something have some full, extra. Full dry ice and everything. Full, full dry yeah, ice, yeah. Like you can get the, come in and the light sticks out and, and flow out. A yeah. little bit of party mode in there, nice. yeah. But yeah, um, I think that's it. That was one of the things I think you established earlier on in the concept was, was this kind of like cool chamber in engineering. Yeah, because we needed that space. I yeah. mean, you need space to put all the components somewhere and just thought, well, let's just turn it into a feature. Yeah, So and it kind of fits with the origin kind of family yeah. as well, I yeah. think. Um, yeah, yeah. it's good, it's good. Um, and then, yeah, kind of from engineering, you kind of go straight to the back and that's where you've got your, your storage. I don't know if you know the SCU size off, off hand, but um, 
Oh, not off the top of my no, head now. No. Should, you can, should probably put that in the notes. Press, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, um, so you can put a decent amount of storage in there. You've also got the escape pods. One of the other things we were doing when we were looking at this space with the bike is originally we were kind of, if we put the bike in this area, it meant that the storage reduced. So we were looking at kind of other ways of moving the storage around. At one point we thought, oh, we could put it out in the wings, but then that didn't really make sense because, you know, ideally in the wings where you store your fuel and that sort of yeah. stuff and, and it just felt really awkward mm -hmm. where this kind of gives us the kind of classic traditional big block of cargo yeah right? big block of it cargo it kind of has a vehicle in it can't you yes yeah, yeah. Um, you, you can fit a cyclone in there yes other, other smallish vehicles yeah but obviously it will take away your cargo space your cargo yeah. space so yeah. it's not you can do it but you won't have any but cargo but you won't have any cargo so yeah yeah okay and then yeah we kind of make our way upstairs three man three crew Bridge. Yep, three crew bridge. Um, and yeah, it's it's you know, it's very to me anyway, the bridge is, is very origin. It feels um you know very, very sleek. Um get a real nice view of the, the, the kind of front of the ship out in front of you. Um and uh yeah, it's 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 a nice place and it's got the classic kind of origin uh kind of hardened and you know, we haven't got any low tech screens, it's all kind of projected and yeah, feels right. fancy. Yeah. Yeah. Does well, that mean you can see there's a lot of 600i influence like from the, from the original concept mm -hmm. image that was done for the 600i yeah so i was keen to get those that sort of it's almost like a like the black louvers yeah and then get everything sort of to be honest, they were one of the things that we we kind of kept referencing back during the production was like let's just go back and have a look at the 600 because that's one of the again one of those kind of shapes that really sells origin mm -hmm. to me <laughs> and yeah so i think it was good kind of keeping them and that, yeah, it was also, uh, what's the origin buggy called? G12. Thank you, yeah. So, again, we've got the louvers in yeah. that. Yeah. The 890 as well as, like, all the, the bigger origin ships have this sort of arrangement of a single centre seat and two crew ones, whether they're at the front or at the back. They're all sort of that style. Mm -hmm. So it all plays together. Mm -hmm. And then habs wise you kind of got the captain suite and you've yeah. got the the crew suite and you know within those they've got their own kind of lockers they've got their own kind of personal ship storage i'm not sure if it's exact but they're very similar in, in their kind of scale but obviously the captain gets the yeah. um slightly more space a little bit more kind of luxury because you know he's he's the boss mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah. Was a, at one point it was a, a four person ship and then we reduced it down to three so we've got that extra space for the oh, see i'm learning loads of stuff I didn't have today. Lots, yeah. lots of things changed during <laughs> yeah. the concept. Like changing it from four to three might sound like a quick thing on paper, but then it's like you're losing a seat out the bridge somewhere. Uh, yeah, you it lose been lockers. You tough lose to fit an extra seat in that bridge though, because it would have yeah. you would have had to have kind of had them in two banks. So it would have been a bit yeah. Yeah, yeah, just just purely visual sort of. It feels a little bit nicer weighted if it's. If I mean, it's, the whole ship has a so it's a triangle. It looks fast. Yeah, yeah. 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 It looks fast. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, as you kind of progress through to the rear of the ship, um, this is where, like I say, originally it was... It was a party time. Yeah, it was the party room. Yeah, we've, we've kept some of the elements, I guess. You know, there, there's still a kitchen, a, a decent-sized yeah, kitchen. Yeah, it's still a nice space, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's like luxury. It's still yeah. that sort of luxury yacht. You've got your wine fridge. Kind of so, feel, isn't yeah. it? So, yeah. yeah. You've got yeah. everything you need back there. You've got your food making facilities. You've got your breakout area and then yeah. your big hollow table at the back. Yeah, the, and, the and that was sort of like the, um, I guess like the operations area. And we kind of, we, we tried to make that place feel like um, it was a little bit more focused with the, the hollow table than the sort of, you know, the, the breakfast bar that, that's just in front of it. And um, I think having, because we tried quite a few different ideas there as well, actually. I remember at one point we had like a war table with, with seating and stuff, but that was yeah. a bit tight for kind of maneuverability. Yeah. And also I think, um, it we ended up going with like the standing kind of hollow table rather than a seating one because when you first kind of like look at it it felt like an extension of the um relaxation area rather than like a kind of planning you know what, what we're going to do in our operation type area and then yeah basically that that kind of covers most of the 400 i guess as a, a whole so we'll move from the 400 i to something a bit bigger um, and something entirely new, which is the Anvil Liberator, which is Anvil's latest design spaceship, which is purely for transporting ships. So we wanted to do something properly uh, and sort of provide that entry level spaceship for that 
career. If you want to be a, a ship hauler, then this is the ship for you. It provides that good foundational base for it. It's a fairly regular sort of process on this one. As Jared and I have chatted before, you know, these ships are often described as, as births, you know, easy births, hard births, difficult births. Um, I think this one was a fast berth. It's been a while since we've worked on some Anvil stuff. So in terms of the lineup, you know, we have the Ballista, the Terrapin, the Hurricane, the Valkyrie, you know, is probably more sort of, you know, it's one of those larger ships. Then we've got the Carrick. Yeah. So a lot of work has already been done for those ships. And we've got, um, you know, we've got the modular kits. So in terms of the concept process, uh, theoretically, it's it's smooth sailing. And in terms of, you know, the, our process again, uh, you know, it's that, it's that investigation. And, you know, each manufacturer has a sort of a loose set of rules. I'll say it's loose because there's always space for us to sort of slightly veer and yeah. slightly tweak the manufacturer. Well, I think, like you said earlier, like manufacturers change with time yeah, as well as... They evolve. Yeah, it's not like every ship came out with the exact same date with the exact same manufacturing processes. It, it kind of all... Yes, yeah. yeah. And I think, I, I mean, that's kind of what I like about Star Citizen is we've got this sort of, it's this sort of rolling kind of like design, you know, it's sort of design everything timelines. is being updated, yeah. yeah. Um, and, it, you know, it's nice that, you know, we, if, when we work narrative and they're like, oh, well, actually it's based on this old design. Yeah. Or whether it is, it's a new stuff. So, you know, one of the early requirements from John, which you can see here in this, uh, fabulous des designer art. It's top quality design yeah, block. Yeah, yeah. I'm liking it. I'm not sure about that uh, shade of green, but <laughs> not quite anvil. But basically, this is super easy for us, and also, you know, because we're working with a contractor about sort of laying out the limits of, you know, because we always, you know, we like to make ships big, you know, um, so it's always okay. We've got our metrics, it has to fit within this. Like, Whatever you do, make it cool, but it has to fit within these bounds. Yeah, so. it was quite strict on the landing pad size, but you need to fit a number of ships in it, but also make sure that it really kind of stayed within its... Otherwise, John will give us yeah, uh, big uh, slap wrists. I'll so. come after you. Yeah. Because um, on, on that image there, you can see there's the red box, which is the maximum bounds that the ship can be. If, if you go outside that, it literally won't fit through the hangar doors yeah. and ceiling. So obviously it has to be in there, and that's a max, not a goal to hit because yeah. we've ended up in the past with ships that have a centimetre or two's clearance right Carrick. at the edge. Carrick. Yeah. Carrick. <laughs> Carrick. Uh, so when you're coming in and out of the hangar, you just clip, yeah, as soon as you clip one side of it, then it throws it into yeah. the other one. Yeah, um, it makes it difficult. And you can see there for the, the extra small landing pads, uh, the green size. So once you've got three of them, so at this point in the, the design brief, it was just three extra small ships. By the time you've got these three green, and they're actually, they have some Z height to them, which I didn't put in here. Um, mm -hmm. By the time you've got these green blocks, so like you've got to have space for these, and you've also got to fit in this, then you sort of start funneling yourself into Yeah, and shapes. I think, I mean, you'd, you know, you provided a reference image right at the start, which is of military hovercraft. Yeah, the, the American, uh, I can't remember if it's the Navy or the Army. Yeah, and so that was like... I mean, people will see straight away the the correlation between the two and the sort of influence. But it, you know, it also makes sense, right? It's, it's a very a functionality. I'd say it's a very functional ship, isn't yeah. it? So, and, and it feels like, like say, obviously, the real life version has been made for that function, and this this kind of follows suit. Yeah, definitely. And so, you know, we'll basically be looking at some of our exterior options, and again, it's always. You know, it's quite difficult when you have something like that that reference image yeah. of the military hovercraft because instantly it sits in your mind yeah. and you sort of get, um, you kind of get sort of stuck in that thinking. And so, you know, part of my job is also to sort of push, push the concept artists and say, right, okay, well, what about this? What about that? I think, you know, it's always, a, you know, it's, it's always a sort of a dual role. You know, we sort of, you know, you work together and kind of uh, two minds is always better than one right so in in this case we're sort of looking at you know this is a sort of first first stab at it so there's a lot of similarity with the valkyrie so those are the valkyrie engines you know it's it's pretty standard it's just one one floor plate and it's symmetrical 
Then we look at some cleaner stuff. It's not, you know, it, it's a nice design, but it uh, doesn't really speak of um, Anvil to me. Yeah. I mean, but, I, you know, it's cool. I like it. There's some, there's some interesting certainly things. Certainly very hovercrafty. Yeah, yeah. I think just, just uh, too, too simple. For, too wedgy. Yeah. This one was asymmetrical version. You know, we've got that massive tank on the side. What it does, I'm not quite sure at this point, but it's, you know, it's just visual exploration. We've got the asymmetrical wings. Again, in, you know, sort of interesting stuff. At this point, we're starting to push um, into, like, Terrapin territory. So we've got sort of uh, essentially, like, the, the bridge, and it's kind of, like, got a, a cowl. It's like a sort of, you know, it's kind of like the little turtle head mm. from the Terrapin. And sort of mixing and matching and so you know it's kind of interesting again you know the, we're doing these things rapidly so you know has has some pros and cons design design wise well because obviously we have the x y metric but you also have the z so a lot of our hanger metrics are quite tall um mm. so the, the problem with this one was it was just to the height of the ship like the actual yeah. actual height it would have needed to be would have been double that so then you end up with this really tall gangly yeah. thing yeah. because we've also shortened it by a third so i like you yeah. trying to get yourself into like the shape of a ship <laughs> yeah, that's really tall. yeah and then here is like um where we sort of start hitting upon something that um i don't know where the decision was made but you know it made sense to have the garages yeah. on that lower deck mm -hmm. here you know you've got two tanks lying side by side which you know it's cool, it looks good, but it isn't actually like an official feature. Yeah. It was around this point where we, we were looking at the, the double layer thing uh, and trying to get these two layers to work or two floors to work with the three larger ships. So we changed it from the three extra small pads to two extra small pads, which basically take any single seat fighter in the game and some around. So I think a prospector also fits on there. Yeah. And yeah. then we scaled the, the front one down to an extra, extra small, so mm -hmm. that's things like the, the Argo MPUV, uh, Origin 85X, uh, and smaller flying ships like that. But also, interestingly, that extra, extra small metric is sort of the same as the medium vehicle metric. There's, there's like a metre difference yeah. in height, which is the Ballista and Nova. So we went from these three extra smalls uh, to two extra smalls on top, one extra, extra small at the front, and then these two garage slots, which can also if you're willing to try and fly your small ship in there. You yeah, you were playing it. around. You could fit quite a few combinations yeah. of yeah. ships I mean, in I there. I mean, I had you? a shot. Yeah. I treated it like I was a fan and basically just and basically filled that whole carriage. There was no uh, sort of like door opening space at all. It was... Yeah, yeah. yeah it was uh, Cyclones and... We know what the players DS's. are like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it looked good. I mean, yeah. it, looked like, um, you know, it looked like a ferry, you know, when they're just full of the vehicles all just stacked up. Um, just increases but, like the risk value of flying it, doesn't it? Like if you've you know, yeah. got three ships on it, all right, yeah. you've got fifteen. And need a big insurance yeah. um, payout. So uh, you know, once we have the you know an exterior that we were happy with, then it's you know then we move on to the interior, and you know it's only two crew. Yep. Yeah, so it's it's two crew. Uh, you have obviously the, the person flying the thing, uh, and then the the second person who can either. It, sort of a flexible role there there is a turret that they can control mm -hmm. they can go sit in it and uh, shoot anything that comes at you but it's not really a ship that's a combat ship it's mm -hmm. it's a transporter ship if you want protection you need to bring protection with you or rely on the ships that you're carrying to provide that protection which mm -hmm. is another benefit of this open topped yeah. ship is yeah, you, can just you come under launch. attack yeah. Yeah. everyone can launch out straight away you're not having to fly your ships out one by one out of a tube they, they can Get off pretty quickly. We haven't done launch tubes yet, have we? One day. One day. One day, One day we do launch tubes. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> I think about that. Um, so, yeah, basically we've moved on to interiors. Again, it's, uh, it's just investigation of, um, you know, we've got our function and what it needs to achieve. But, you know, in the last what, two, four years, definitely the last two years, there's like, our process has just been a lot, a lot stronger in terms of player flow. So there's no more of the Starfarer, uh, Higgledy Piggledy mystery tour. I mean, that was our first yeah. multi-crew ship, so yeah. the pipeline wasn't in place. 
I, I mean, spaceships, interiors, I was like, I don't know. So, I mean, there's been a lot of learning going on. So now it's like, okay, if I'm a player, what, what, what experience do I want? Yeah. Like, how do I get from A to B? I don't want to do A to G to H to get to B. Yeah. None of that business. So, so as we look at these um, uh, interiors, we just sort of looked at sort of different flow, basically, different ideas. So um, it feels quite good. And we sort of worked on, again, just flow. So if you're in the garage, you can easily get from the garage into, into the living quarters. Um, you know, the elevators just run the full height. It's one for crew, one for passengers. So if you're under the ship, you can just easily get up and down. And so uh, the whole process is a lot more streamlined. Um, and there's even like, even if you're in that top, in those top rooms, um, you know, and like it's, you know, there's a call to action. You've all got to get out. We've even put a nice little set of stairs that just run down the side of the yeah. ramp. And so you can just pipe, you know, run down, get in your whatever it is. Whatever vehicle. <laughs> and then off you go. So a lot of, I feel like a lot of thought was given to just like and, improve. And I think it's really nice as well, the fact that you've got, like say, that, that passenger section kind of sectioned off and they're always ready. But then, like say, you were saying about like, the bows of the ship and how that's that sort of all that technical stuff's like hidden at the, the bottom. And that, that feels nice that that's crew only. And, and you know, because you don't want passengers just, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. just Definitely. milling around. And then moving on to, you can see here, the garage space and where the cargo is stored. So originally that was, the cargo was going to essentially take up yeah. one of the garage spaces. It was going to be a, a, a compromise choice that the players could make of that the cargo is stacked down, either down the middle of the, the, the lower garage or across like one of the pads, so you could choose. Uh, but then we decided to... Uh, well, we had a bit of space. Well, yeah, had a bit basically of space a, a concept guy when I went rogue... <laughs> I was like, oh, what about this? This is cool. And we were like, we were like yeah, yeah, it does look cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, well, like, John, can we have this? Come into a meeting. Oh, I've just done, gone away and done this, uh, this, this thing that we're not going to talk about, but it's, it's turned <laughs> yeah. into the cargo storage room. So yes, yeah. It's a, a good sort of save. Of <laughs> well, we want, I mean, you know, for me as an art director, I want, you know, I want my team to feel like they can take those little forays off if they want, if they've got a good idea. Um, and you know, luckily this time it's yeah. it's panned out yeah. and makes good use of the space. I mean, because like I said, the ship is it is quite big. So then we get to the fun part, which is when we get onto promo. Uh, I think it's everyone's favourite part involved with this sort of stuff, and that is really sort of I call it selling the dream. So it's um, you know you're really sort of honing in into what a player's experience might be. Um, and I, I love doing this sort of stuff as well. So, um, so here we've got you know fully loaded carrier. It's the the uh, core of what that ship is for. Like, you have these these smaller car carrier borne ships is what Chris likes to call them. Like, they're they're not deep space fighters. They can't go long distances by themselves. They they need to be from a, a parent ship. So, the the Liberator is unless you suddenly got an Idris to carry things to with this is you. this yeah, is yeah. this is what you're going to see going through these wide and long star systems like pyro is incredibly large compared to stanton and stanton's already quite big to go from one side to the other so we really need these ships to help you lug all your stuff mm. from point a to point b yeah. because if you do it in your in your hornet that's going to be i don't know 50 100 little stops whereas you cram in one of these and send it on its way it's going to be a much better experience for everyone yeah yeah absolutely no I'm, I'm, i think this is going to be a like I say, a fun one to kind of get on to yeah, yeah yeah i think your team's gonna like that that's pretty much it for the anvil liberator um ship transporter at its core two-man crew designed for for hauling three spaceships and some ground vehicles uh long distance uh mm. very cool Let's let's talk about the Banu Merchantman then. It's that that ship that's been around for for a long time. For a long time now. I think fans have been waiting quite a while for this. Yeah, we we haven't really shown a, a huge amount of it beyond 
those original concept images. So no, and I think um, you know this is my second round on this. So I think maybe like three years ago we did a we did an initial concept yeah. round like around the time of the Defender, I guess. We, we I can't started. actually remember. So long ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But sure, let's. Um, I think fans are going to love this. So there's a few things that need to be updated for the Merchantman. Uh, obviously, we've talked about this many times in the past. Uh, as Star Citizen develops, things get added, uh, things get refined, we, we improve our, our workflow. So number one thing we had to do was look at the size and the scale of the ship because I think it was, it was 160 metres wide and 160 metres long. So it's in essence a cube. Yeah, but mm -hmm. it's a very tall ship as well. Yeah, it? but so. it was it was very vague because we had never done a full interior layout. So not not to like the new system. No. Yeah, so we need to make sure it fit everything in. So it's always a good starting point. Um, the cargo numbers were they've never really been changed since they were originally concepted as freight units, not standard cargo units. So mm -hmm. the scale of cargo has changed since we did it originally. I don't remember freight units. Yeah. It, was, it was yeah. It was a long, my long time. time ago. The marketplace slash bazaar yeah. uh, needs to have a good working out. And then lastly, uh, we wanted to have some synergy between the defender and the merchantman. So we we found a way to get a defender hangar on board. So that obviously has big consequences for the ship. So let's talk about the exterior. I guess the thinking about it. Seems so. Seems so long ago since I started on this, um, but the addition of the the defender to the ship basically had the biggest impact in a way. Like just because because the defender is not a slim ship, is it? No, it's, it's deceptively yeah. big to me. Like the defender, I always think in my head that it's this tiny little yeah. thing. But it's, in fly it's, mode, it's quite slim. Yeah, but then when it's landed, it's got this sort of you know big stance. Yeah, so um, this has been. I th I can't I think I've probably been on this for maybe a year something like that now, um, and I said before you know we we did an initial round of concept work, and it was sort of done more in isolation so we didn't really have uh, a full interior and we sort of treated it more as okay we need a corridor we need a, an idea of a marketplace we need an idea of a bridge, um, and you know we'll kind of sort of. Uh, piece them together and so that was maybe like three years ago something like that and obviously process has changed mm -hmm. you know as we've discussed today it's more about the player experience and the flow and things making sense less less rule of cool if we, if we still have the coolness but you want it to work right yeah. you don't want it to be frustrating uh, i think i think when, when you kind of do it like obviously this big ship so you think oh yeah you know we can make whatever room this size and it'll be it'll be fine but that kind of always sets us up for just a lot more headaches when it comes to, to our side. So by you spending the time to actually like fully flesh out the interior, it just saves us so much time when we come to actually yeah, do the production yeah, side of it. Definitely. Um, kind of takes all that risk away from us and puts it up front onto, onto you, basically. Yeah. So thanks, Paul, yeah. 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 Well, you're, welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. I mean, we've tried, we've tried hard. I mean, you can see here that, you know, the ship did have to scale up. Yeah. We talked about earlier, we have those, those hangar metrics and scaled up it now doesn't fit doesn't fit the hangar yeah. so we'll, we'll get to the i think we'll get to the solution in a little bit yeah and just a quick shot of the front and you can actually see that from the front it hasn't actually changed that much you know it's grown a little bit in height but you know gained a little bit of body mass but overall pretty pretty similar i mean we've you know sort of you know the ethos of this whole thing is you know the ship was really cool mm. anyway like Everybody really liked the ship, so it wasn't that we wanted to change it just for change's sake. It was just we need to make it work. We do need to advance it. Um, and so between myself, concept artist Mike Oberschneider and Mark Gibson, um, one of the CIG's designers, we've, we basically met twice a week, every week for months, and basically gone through the ship from top to bottom, inside to out. Yeah, there's, um, there's a huge amount of ship. To, yeah, to yeah. With. And, yeah. It, you know, hands down, this has been the most difficult and hardest ship to date. Like, um, 
I went, I've not had a nervous breakdown. Actually, you know, the, the whole process has been quite nice in a way, um, but it's just been long. It's the long, it's the... I think this is the one that, like... It's a marathon. To, to begin with, I was really scared. And then the, the kind of, like, the closer you've kind of got to finishing your work, the kind of, like, the less scared I'm getting and the more excited I'm getting. <laughs> and I'll probably have, when we get into production, I'll be like, oh, no, what are we going to do? And then, then again, once we kind of st actually kind of get over that hurdle, because it is, it is a, it's quite an intimidating ship, not... not like just visually, but but like yeah. The, the, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff. I mean, we're seeing here the sort of hangar opening. Mm -hmm. Um, so basically, we've you know the one of the sort of design philosophies of the Banu um, ships is they they sort of incorporate tech where it suits them. So they use tech from humans, they use tech from Xi'an, um, whatever suits them to sort of achieve what their needs are. So for this ship, we've leveraged a lot of Xi'an tech. So it's a lot of that. Um, essentially levitation tech so stuff doesn't have to be physically connected to move it's sort of it sort of hovers and then and then shifts along so it's it's basically given us a lot of opportunity for creativity so hanger here you know it's always multi-part as well so it's always mm. kind of nice basically shot from the front this is with the the front guns out which are sa that's yeah, correct big, isn't it? big size eight guns one of the the original Core cool things of the the match was all its weapons are sort of tucked away and and hidden, so it yes. gives you that non-threatening aura to start with. And when it needs to, then everything. I was going to say it's going to be up. quite a powerhouse, really, isn't it? Like yeah, you know, yeah. With its, its guns and its turrets, it's a proper it's, and it's a proper transformer. This ship, yeah. You know? I mean, there's, there's there's probably no area that doesn't transform almost, especially on the exterior. And again, you know, like John said, it's just to keep with that. Kind of like, oh, you know. Just a friendly trader. Yeah, just a yeah, friendly trader. Peaceful. Don't worry about me, just yeah. going on my business. And then suddenly everything just pops out and, and it's all business. So, again, sort of multi stage animation for the guns. Again, for the turret. Um, I mean, the turret featured in the original, um, you know, there was a hidden. It was never uh, really fully explained. No, there was, no. There was a, a turret, a man turret there that you could get in. And defend with and it was in that top fin i guess you call yeah it. and when when you know when the weaponry is unmanned it's a lot easier we can get away with a lot of smaller spaces once you put a person in it then it's a whole different ball of wax yeah and just the player experience and it's it's a you know twin twin gun twin, yeah, <laughs> twin s5 yeah. so it's not giving you a little tickle it's uh yeah. quite a big punch yeah and even though it's only a, a you know, a, a turret, a gunner, you, you still got to kind of take all the consideration you're taking in a like a pilot seat in terms of their visibility and, and everything else. And, and, and yeah, as yeah. Well. And, and yes, you know, you, you expect to see the big guns and the silhouette and get that kind of like the real feel of, of being in a gunner seat. But it, like I say, it's, it's quite easy for it to just kind of grow in complexity quite yes. quickly. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, basically, we've, you know, we've used GM Tech again to help us sort of reveal the turret. Also to elevate the turret, um, still, you know, we've, we've had we've got multiple ideas for that, so I think we'll just have to figure that out a lot further on. And then we have these, I mean, these these guns look tiny. In yeah, don't they? they're, they're still sizes. Like so these these are guns that most fighters have equipped to them, but they're on these um, point defense turrets. So obviously, the ship was big to start with. It's bigger now. It's more of a target for missiles and torpedoes and. One of the best ways we have in game to counter those is these automated point defense turrets. So, Banu again, well, humans have these phalanx style guns that shoot down incoming threats. We'll, we'll take that and we'll use our own guns. Uh, so, there's, it's got four of these on the hull. So, there's two on top near the bridge, and then I think we see uh, the other two uh, underneath. Uh, so, you've sort of got your, your 360 degrees protection from, from missiles Ooh. from those. And then there's a, an additional pair of size four remote turrets under the wings. Uh, these are controlled from the bridge. Uh, the bridge crew mentioned them. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's not lacking on. It's not lacking on. The, the thing is, it, it can carry a fair amount of cargo, and and you know, it's got its own trading floor. Yeah, it's you know, your yeah. livelihood. Yeah, yeah, you kind of need to make sure that. I mean, you basically, can that. yeah. There's a. It's it's a bit of a TARDIS. It's a bit of a. Mm. You know, yeah. There's a. As people will see, there's a whole bunch of extra stuff that we've squeezed into this compared to the first one. So there's always been this feature on the on the Banu, it was there on the original, but it never really had a function. 
You know, some people call it the paddle, some people call it the flipper. But Chris was like, okay, it needs, it needs a reason yeah. to yeah. be in there. It, it is very dominant. Yeah. In, in this world, yeah. Isn't it? So I, I, I'll always remember that one bit of Defender concept art where it's just there, just destroying a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> it flies over, just dragging it through. So we've, um, you know, it's it's a multifunction essentially because um, one of the difficulties was is, uh, at the top of that flipper fuel scoop, sorry, um, is basically the entrance to the marketplace for traders and the public. So it was, you know, there's that challenge of what it needs to look, uh, you know, it needs to do its job, but it also needs to look visually appealing because it's going to be the entrance. Mm -hmm. um, so there was, and we'll see that a little in a second. Um, but it was, yeah, it was always, it was always a bit of a tricky thing to solve. And so, you know, again, we're seeing here the, as John mentioned earlier, the ship got wider and didn't yeah. actually fit on a landing pad. Which, which meant we had no hangers that it would officially fit in. We yeah. could only ever officially land at docking stations with docking yeah. ports or on a planet's surface, which is, you're, as a trader, you're missing out on Living. all the places you could land to, to do trading. So we had to find a... Solution. A solution. I mean, the funny thing is, this is this is the mo this is the simplest of the of the um, of the solutions that we came up with. I mean, there's probably like ten others that we did. Some of them were super crazy, you know, part you know parts just folding back on each other and all sorts of things. So, but in the end, I think I mean, simplicity wins out. I mean, it's it's it. They're not small bits of wing to move. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of. I mean, there's gaps it? here, and we you know we haven't got the mesh in there, yeah. but there will be. We'll, we'll work it out for you, Ben. Yeah. So you can see here, this is basically a shot of what is the fuel scoop, but it transforms again and becomes this pathway to the marketplace. So you'll have this, basically we wide this experience again. It's kind of the red carpet treatment. You're walking up into the marketplace. It's not in this image, but you know we will have, or hopefully, um, we'll have like softs, like, awnings basically that will sort of come out as well and so i'll have that sort of marketplace it, i think for me this, this is one of the ships that really excites me because um it's very different to you know yeah. not all the, a lot of the ships that we've kind of we've done um and i think that sort of like initial experience like you say of seeing this thing kind of like come and land down and and the traders kind of inviting you in and, and entering into you know it's it's very other world worldly yeah. kind of entering up that walking yeah. up those steps out of you know one of our kind of space stations, like you know, our human space stations. Oh, absolutely. I think it's going to be kind of really exciting to kind of... I mean, the idea that is experience. that as you go up those stairs, you'll have, you know, holographic visuals of products that are in the marketplace. Yeah. And so they will sort of pop up and just be spinning. So you'll have like, it's again, it's just that sort of shopping experience. And mm. It's like, oh, okay, I can get that and get that. Or maybe even artifacts that the traders picked up. Um, I mean, you've got options basically. So, yeah. um, and then also the cargo that yeah, changed. Car didn't cargo it? is a big uh, <laughs> topic. Um, it was one of those things in the the original concept. Even digging out the original design brief was wasn't particularly clear on was the cargo bay internal, was it external, was it uh, yeah, and it, and was we, it a walkable space? And we kept yeah. it external for yeah. the first half of this yeah. development, and mm -hmm. and then uh, during a meeting where I think. A bunch of us in there with Chris, and we were all like, "Oh no, it's internal." And then someone else was like, "Oh no, it's external." And then we just decided, like, let's make it enclosed. Um, we'll keep the the styling of how it was in the original concept, so you have that sort of, I don't know how you want to call it, shuttering or on the outside. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm struggling to actually remember it now because I'm kind of like yeah. not locked into this one. But yeah. it was more that it was it was you saw the cargo crates, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, they were exposed. Yeah, they? yeah, they were they were exposed. Certainly from underneath, you could see them all. Yeah, they were tops top mounted, and they could all drop down. But that caused huge problems with the entrance case, where if they could all drop down at the same time, then you couldn't get in the ship to start with. So we did have a solution, but yeah. this is definitely better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. now it's now it's enclosed. You just have one way of dropping at the front. And then we'll see later how it's all managed inside. So you just have you can have the front ramp open and cargo coming up and down. Mm -hmm. The two the two systems are not interfering with each other. Mm -hmm. and yeah, that was your cargo thing. is more protected as well. Yeah, and that's kind of I guess a key element of it, isn't it? Is is 
you know, not only having the um, like footfall into your your marketplace, but these big trade items, you're going to need to deliver them. Yeah. 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 Yep. So we're going to move on to um, so we've been looking at sort of uh, sort of functional images of you know basically explaining um, how we've been dealing with design decisions and how that's affected art. And so now we move on to the sort of the sexy stuff of looking at how we've taken the sort of the existing Banu materials, you know, from the early merchantmen, which uh, there was a lot of good stuff on that, and then just progressing it a little bit further. And, you know, again, this is still, you know, this is subject to change still, you know, it's, it's previs, but in terms of where it's heading, you know, it's really quite exciting. And so, um, you know, not everything is modelled in this, so, you know, there the probably will be more folds in the metal, mm -hmm. kind of like there is on the Defender. Where, yeah. You know, you yeah, if you look at the concept images versus where it all ends up pivoting on those those arms yeah there's a lot more detail there's a lot added. more yeah there's a lot more sort of intricate sort of folding of the metal and so we're just kind of like working in with kind of sort of turning it into more it, it is more ornate it's more of a sort of uh, a, a sort of special item essentially um and sort of really trying to sort of get that impression so you know we're layering in the gold we're layering in the sort of all the sort of um, sort of Art Nouveau line work, sort of with a sort of Banu influence. You know, we're looking at sort of taking um, sort of uh, materials like opal or whatever the Star Citizen equivalent is of that, and also integrating that into the ship. So it really is sort of a display of wealth. It's yeah. like if you've got this, like, you you're loaded. <laughs> <laughs> it's the crown jewel of your fleet. It is so. Uh, you know, I think it. You know, it, it's it's going to some really nice places, and so you know, we're looking at this heavy bruiser of a turret, um, and this is still work in progress. You know, ideally there would be more work to do with this, and so we'd get more of the sort of um, the curvature in the in the metalwork and stuff. But because we're on a, you know, because of time scale and stuff, we've got to make some compromises. But. Um, we'll pass that information on to yeah, you. Yeah, we'll, I'm sure we'll get a, have a good kick off on this one. I like the tarot on this one. Yeah. It's good. So that's the exterior. Um, we'll move on to the interior. Uh, I guess we'll go over how it was, uh, mm -hmm. and how it is, and then we'll go on a magical mystery tour. Through the interior. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So um, it was uh, a lot simpler, wasn't it? Yeah. Back in the day, it was pre, pre metric. So we didn't have all the requirements in place. Yeah, no components. No components. The marketplace is a lot simpler in here. And so with with Banu Merchantman 2.0, or in my head it's 3.0, um, you know, we basically moved on to a, a fully upgraded interior roll drum. And so you can see from this cutaway, and it's kind of hard to show uh, all the pathways in this ship. We, we, and I'm, I feel like I'm banging this drum, but again, we did a lot of work on pathways and navigation. And so you can, you know, as a trader, you're locked off to a certain route. As a crew, you, you've got access to everywhere, but as a trader, you're like, okay, well, you've got these areas you can get to. You can come in from a docking collar, and there's two different docking collars. You know, there's the, there's the larger ship one on one ship side and the ship to station. Yeah. And then that funnels you into the marketplace. And then you can go back down through the flipper or vice versa, the fuel scoop. And so, you know, in terms of what's changed, you know, we've, you know, just we've had to create space for the cargo of, you know, the hangar for the Defender. That was a massive one. So a lot of just shifting, just shifting the internals around. Um, you know, there's two elevators in this. There's one for crew. There's one for traders. Again, I think, I think that kind of like builds on the experience of, of someone coming to buy stuff there, though. And to, to me, that's kind of like part of the, the lure of the ship is that, you know, like I say, the, the crew have their own everything yeah. itself, but yeah, the, yeah. The, the kind of like the people that are coming to spend money, that experience is like the, the kind of like one of the core elements of that ship. That's what makes it kind it's of a, so yeah, special. A different experience to yeah. coming on board it that way versus living on board it and 
Yeah, totally. Working on board. And so we'll see here that these are like previous images. These are straight straight out of 3D Studio Max with a bit of Photoshop magic. But it's just giving you an idea of that going up the fuel scoop or the or the market entrance, you know, you'll have the you'll have the awnings all folded out. It should be a real grand grand experience. Will we have red carpet? I, 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 kind of, I, I don't know why, in my, in my head it's like Aladdin's cave. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, that, that's totally. what it kind of... And we've got, we had some reference images as well oh, okay. for the marketplace. And so you, here, you basically, you've walked up and you're, you're again, this is always in this concept uh, theory, there's always been this tree of life, essentially. So basically you enter at the base of the tree and then it forms the spine. And then that tree branches out and basically reaches to the front of the ship. Yeah. That's the theory. Like, yeah. It's always it's, been this organic theory. The same in the Defender. You, you come in the Defender up the ramp. Yes. And then you have that big central tree yeah. which houses components and then that stretches out and back around to form. So the, the line doorways. work in this is is a little more sort of refined. Into it's, It has gone less organic um, compared to the Defender. We've kind of gone for a slightly less alien feeling. Yeah. Just to... Like, like doesn't... Feel like it's actually a tree that has grown yeah. and they build a ship around yeah. this kind of organic thing it is a ship yeah absolutely and so here um, is a capture from 3d studio max just so it's super clear like this is where this is the lower lower floor so the marketplace is split into two floors eight shops on each floor yeah or is it no sorry eight, uh, four eight, shops four on shops each floor. eight total um and then you have this little walkway that sort of goes over the top you can kind of see here obviously we've got a flying jellyfish <laughs> but the theory is that that'll be a holographic display and you know hopefully the captain can choose what's on there yeah, it's been a special know. offer for the day could be special offer could show a weapon could just could just have like butterflies flying around whatever but this really gives you a vibe of um you know the complexity of the the banu sort of folded metal that organicness and sort of just that overall experience. The headaches that you're going to cause me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And that yeah, Aladdin's cave. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've got the little jewels yeah. hanging off the. I really, I really like those, like the, the kind of like the treatment of light in a lot of cons. I don't know, I'm stealing your thunder from no, future that's thing. Fine, yeah. yeah, but the the sort of um, you know, the, these jewels and stones that are kind of going to be used as a light source throughout the ship, and I think that's kind of like very really nice. Yeah. Just, just like a bit. Different, different, and, different and it, yeah fluorescent tube yeah LED something. lights or yeah something. and so we really sort of pushed on that on this one and so here is like in there's basically as part of the tree of life in the in the marketplace is the elevator shaft and so mm. you can then go up there into the negotiation yeah, room yes. which was in the original one of the, the images that everyone remembers from yes. the, the original concept was that room with the table and yeah. looking out over the cargo. And so we've kind of kept that, and we'll come to that in a second, but before you get there, you come out of the elevator and you're sort of in a in a central corridor, which also leads to guests' habitation rooms. Yeah. In law, these trades often take a long amount of time, so there's, there's a lot of back and forth with the, the narrative team on this ship in particular with how, how do Banu trade, how, how do they eat, how do they... Because for the Defender, it was sort of very small scale. But mm -hmm, this, mm -hmm. It's long duration. Um, so it's the, these trades can take days, weeks, well, maybe months. So the, the people that are coming on board to trade need a place to stay yeah. whilst... And, and it's not like, like you know, the people that are going to be kind of flying this, they, they don't have a... Well, in my head, they don't have like a base of operations. Like, this is their, their home. This is their home. Yeah. So, you know, like you say, if, if you're trading your... I guess some of these things could be their livelihood. Their, their, you know... They're trying to trade these really expensive high-end items, and that's kind of. And you want them to feel special, like yeah. you know. The the thing about this always has been that you know making making the people feel you know that they're in something quite unique. And so you can see here, you know, in this image we've got massive gemstones. They could be whatever, but you know, in terms of lighting opportunities, you'll have mm -hmm. the, the core sticks and the light. You know, if they're rotating. There's a lot of cool opportunities. And so here is the, the conference room, which we just mentioned. In the original concept, it was smaller, a lot more compact, but obviously the ship has got bigger and therefore we've got more space. But also, it's it's a display of wealth, right? If you can afford to waste a bit of space, essentially, you know, if you could be like, you know, oh, I don't need to pack it with everything, you know, I just got to make this nice 
uh, player experience where everyone feels sort of relaxed. And so that's kind of what we've been pushing with. So there's a lot of there's a lot of commonality that we've taken from the original and fed into this, but then also pushing pushing further. So again, you can see the, the sort of like carved gemstones inlaid inlaid with more gemstones inlaid with gold and so again you know in terms of player experience it's going to be totally different yeah. to anything yeah. that's happened and we've still kept that viewpoint looking into the into the hangar so the cargo bay sorry into the cargo bay and so yeah it's it's been quite a tussle trying to trying to get everything into place and then this is an example of um, one of the one of the hubs for like if you if you want to do, if you're doing long term trading, and this is uh, really sort of based on again keeping with the organic theme the, the banu shapes but pushing in a slightly different palette and materials and so it's kind of based off of the interior of a nautilus shell, um, and so you can't really tell from here but actually it circles back on itself so there's a a little internal wall there that you go behind and that's where um, toilet and yeah. shower and all that sort of stuff is and then you've got the bed in the back and then you've got lockers and a little seating area so you kind of like a real sort of organic journey so again just pushing on um, leveraging that Xi'an tech as well so the chairs and the desk and even the lights are, are just sort of held yeah, held in space yeah. so um, quite different quite different and so that's that's where the traders go, but yeah. the crew obviously has got access to the full ship, and so slightly less grandiose, but not. Yeah. So the docking cargo, um, that, that, that docking corridor is is still quite elaborate. But that's going to be shared between. Yeah, yeah, it's more of a shared space. There's some more technical elements in there in terms of venting and stuff, and we still want to, you know, this has always been. A theory of you've got your superstructure, then you've got your tech, and then you've got your layering of um, the bodywork, the, yeah, the cladding, yeah. yeah, and then you know there'll be there'll be areas where the sort of tech is revealed and stuff, and so um, by balancing those two, the proportions, you sort of you can kind of like alter the, the feel of the space, and so I mean it's going to be a it's going to be a journey for you guys yeah. of like how you know how we achieve all this but this is the corridor leading to the uh, marketplace from the docking area and so you've got that great big green ring which kind of sort of you know it, that we kind of put there that there and kind of thinking of it shows green when it's safe yeah you know the docking you know yeah. it's not some kind of a yeah, vintage you, going on yeah i was having this conversation with the team this week actually about that exact thing about kind of uh, communicating to the player but not in just a you know as simple as something flashing on a screen or, or whatever else, but right. just having something a little bit a little bit more elegant. So I think again, this will give you some really good opportunities. And again, it's just uh, the new materials, the folds, um, and you know, moving on to the habitation section where sort of crew can go. You know, people people who are familiar with the Defender will really sort of see the sort of common common thread here so you know the amount of gold and shiny stuff <laughs> to put it bluntly is reduced and so it goes to more matte materials you know it's a little less display of wealth it's a little more functional but still got that 3d print you get a lot of, of that sort of like layering in here as well aren't yeah you? yeah that's in the middle is the, the what do we call it the magic tagine yeah <laughs> ultimately yeah. so it's fed from underneath and you you know you choose what you want and then it appears and the top comes off and you get your food out yeah. and you get your cutlery. Um, you can speak to the narrative for a while about sort of how our aliens eat. It's, it's, <laughs> that could be a whole talk in itself, I feel. It's, it's a tricky one because it's a, it's an alien, it's a Banu ship, but it's got to support humans yes. yeah, operating yeah. it. Um, if you had an entirely Banu crew, if you were playing as a Banu, then... Some aspects of this you don't need, but as, yes. as humans, yeah, do, the, so the banner will cat, cat, they cater for both, yeah. don't they? Yeah, yeah, and so yeah, uh, a lot of a lot of complex stuff to sort of get our heads around. Engineering, this is a work in progress shot. It's one of my favourite bits, though. Yeah. I really like this. And you can't really tell from this shot, but it's 
essentially set over three levels. You've got that main middle level and you can sort of get on mini lifts to drop down to components or walk up the stairs to some elevated stuff. But essentially this is leading to the main central engine and that is like sort of counter rotating all those elements. And so you get this awesome um, shadow play basically going on in the room, like really sort of cinematic. It looks extremely cool in, in motion. Just and if we can tie it to either, da was it, were you talking about whether tying it to damage or the state of the It sounds like engine? a good idea, so I'm gonna say yes. So, yeah. you know, if the engine's <laughs> malfunctioning and it's sort of slowing yeah. down and stuff, that'd be kind of cool. I'll, I'll take, I'll claim that one. Okay, yeah. yeah I'm not sure it was, but it's fine. <laughs> And then, you know, in, in terms of the cargo space, what we're looking at here is like the 32 SCU sort of cargo these, boxes. These are the, the big cargo containers that you see in all the, the rest stops and the cargo decks. These yeah. are those, like, the modern day big shipping cargo containers. shipping containers. Yeah. They're, they're, they're quite hefty and you can't, you certainly can't pick them up by yourself and you can't really do it with handheld tractor beams. You need something big. Yes. And so we've got, we've got a hefty... Um, a moving mechanism in there at the moment which you can control from this position that you can see in this, in the screenshot um and so that'll be something else to work out then um but it's like how to work out john <laughs> okay. but you know it will be a really cool area and sort of just below you that's basically where the sort of the loading platform is yeah because it moves the, the cargo containers into that space yes, and then that and space then kind of down. drops down doesn't yes. it yeah so there will be that sort of like Oh, I need the bottom one on the third yes. stack. All oh, right, okay, yeah. let's let's shift everything out and there yeah. is that sort of mini game of Jenga almost with mm. how stuff is going to how you're going to access stuff, yeah. and all the time you'll be able to see from the negotiation room the, into the poor the... guy moving it around, just <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mess it up. Um, but yeah, as, as a result of all those changes, the the cargo capacity has gone down a little. I think it was. It was a nebulous number to start with mm. that had never really been proved still out. Pretty it's big. still big. So yeah. it's, it's around 2,800, uh, which is not a small amount of cargo by any means. Yeah. Um, so it's still well above most ships, but until you get to the whole series, you... I was going to say, yeah. what, I can't remember what a whole series... The, the hull is over 3,000, so it's... Well, it's it's, still, yeah. It's a lot, um, but it's maybe not quite as much as people were hoping for originally. Although I think it looks pretty, though. It does. A yeah. loss of cargo, but you're gaining so much more. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's always a give and take with these things. Of we, we could make every ship do everything, but then mm -hmm. they just become yeah. these humongous vessels. Um, yeah. So it's a, it's always a trade. So moving now up to the bridge area, and what we're looking at here is very much work in progress. I mean, we are literally working on this right now in the sort of top left, I had to think then, is um, an image that we created sort of on round two. And we're, and we're sort of leveraging, leveraging that heavily. So a lot, of, a lot of those shapes will appear into this new stuff. But in this new sort of configuration, you're able to access the bridge, but you're also able to access the remote, not the, the man turret. It's more of an experience, and then also you've got side corridors which leads you to. Oh, it's got a special name though. It's like a med. It's not a meditation room. I can't remember the name oh. of it. There was a, a approved name, wasn't there? Yeah. I can't think what it is. Um, it's kind of like a sort of sacred space, um, where sort of the banu can sort of pay. You know, we've kind of got sort of equivalent of prayer wheels. That's kind of the theory. So it's like this little, this little nice little calm space. Um, so that's been quite fun. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of the areas on this on this ship are very sort of multi-threaded. Mm -hmm. You know, you often have your central area and then stuff coming off it. Um, so, like I said, there's been a lot of a lot of thought given to navigation, and in this area also are two two lifts, which also can take you quickly to other areas mm -hmm. from this bridge. It's a uh an eight person crew now. Um, so there's space for four on the bridge, obviously there's, there's four uh, stations there. Uh, you have one person that can go to the, the manned turrets towards the rear, one person that can fly the defender, and that leaves two to, to deal with everything else whilst you're flying around, because you, you can still trade whilst flying around, but it's probably not the, the wisest of ideas if the person who's come on board to trade has left their ship behind, so. It's, I mean, it might be good for negotiations. Yeah, good for negotiations. Yeah. <laughs>
But the, the eight crew can then fill the eight shops if you're just landed on a planet somewhere. You, mm -hmm. you sort of you pull double duty. You don't obviously don't need to be flying if you landed. You can menu shop or you can let one person do do double duty in shops. Yep. Yep. This is a um, an example. Well, a full size image of uh, that round two concept of of the bridge. And again, you can see the sort of the superstructure that's and all the layering basically. So you know, you know, we have changed the configuration since this image, um, but a lot of a lot of that theory is going to get transposed onto this new one. Same with the materials, and again, just continuing with that flow of from from back to front, basically, always sort of this tree of life and going to the nose of the yeah. ship. By the time people see this, we'll have actually we will have. actually had someone start yeah, yeah, that's true. start working on it. Yeah. So actually in production now after after all these years. Yeah, yeah it's going to um, be good. So. This, this is actually one of the ships that I'm really excited about kind yeah. of playing with in game. Um, it, it's just such a kind of, like I say it's got that kind of uh, full trading experience, but it feels like a proper home that you can, can live on. And it's got a load of weaponry as well, which, yeah. 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 If in doubt, then just yeah. get the guns out. Yeah, <laughs> you will buy it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So that was the Merchantman. Pretty cool. Uh, looking forward to seeing that go into production, yeah, uh, go through production, because it's by the time people see it, it will be in production. Yep. Yep. So to close our our talk out, I uh, thought we would revisit the the idea that we had last time we we did one of these panels. We showed some concept ships or some ideas for concept ships. Mm -hmm. and talked about it and. Everyone voted for them. Obviously, as this is pre-recorded segment, we can't interact with the crowd and uh, get a feel mm. of that. So, fight amongst ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Arm wrestle for which one we do. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I'll do. No. Um, <laughs> so, it's not good at the end, Jared will uh, explain how you can sort of vote or express your preference for what we show today, uh, and we will see what comes of that. But first, let's go over what we did last time. So we had this ground mining vehicle concept. We had the uh, Xi'an small cargo. We had the Tavaran light fighter. Uh, people may recognize a sort of a pattern emerging here. Uh, and then a small refinery ship. So let's see what's happened to those over the last few years. So that small ground miner turned into the Grey Cat Rock and the Rock DS. The Gatak Raylan was the Jian Small Cargo, and that was very close to that, that concept thumbnail mm -hmm. that we did. It was, wasn't it? Uh, we have the Asperia Talon, which was the Talon light fighter. And then the fourth one, which is a bit of a, a, a mystery. A so, mystery. A mystery. <laughs> I like this because I wasn't involved with this last time, but you've got a couple of my favourite ships in that, so... Yes, it's good. Rage yeah. your mind in the, in the future. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that fourth one, the small refinery ship, obviously, people don't know about but uh, I can pretty confidently say people will know about it very fingers soon crossed. fingers crossed so it's a, a new year we'll do it all again we've got four more sort of cuts of options here so we go over those option a is a, a big explorer ship so we obviously have the Carrick as the the, the pinnacle of uh, explorer ships but no there can always be more. Yeah, it would be nice to get a bit of competition in for the character, really. Yeah, maybe something misky. We can go in the misk line. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, I'm down for that. Then we have a selection of ground vehicles there. So there's, there's a there's a right mismatch there. So we've got two little small vehicles and uh, what looks like a, an APC based off the ballista chassis. They, they all look cool. Yeah, the ground vehicles are kind of... Um, Although they're not as, as grand and exciting as the ships, I think they're just really fun, um, yeah. and, it, and it's nice. They're nice things to work on because they are kind of contained and they are quite small. They are, I was going to say like less complex, but they're probably not that much less complex mm -hmm. than a ship because they still require all the same sort of setup and everything else. Yeah. But, and the confinement. Yeah, you, you've got to fit everything in a, in a small space. Um, but I think I think the ground vehicles kind of um, they just add that extra element of fun when you are playing with your friends that it's it's um you know 
it's not all just about space. We've got some beautiful planets and being able to explore them not by a foot is good. Yeah. I don't see a floating noodle bike in there though. A floating noodle. Floating noodle bike. That's still on the list. Yeah. <laughs> it's on my PJ list. special, yeah. yeah. Or I've got a few that I'm trying to like just wear John down with. Maybe the, well, maybe option C, this hover hover vehicle could be a floating big well, pennies. Delivery bike. Delivery quad yeah. bike. Yeah. Could be. So you could have like flying green zones though, wouldn't you? And that would that'd be like all, all yeah, actual kind of landing zones would be all sorts of difficulties. Yeah. Mm. yeah, so that's that's we have some gravel of bikes in game at the moment but this is a, a sort of a more stable secure option because anyone that's flown gravel bikes has experienced probably some mild terror as yeah. they, they try and do it's turns. It's been a while since we've done. Yeah we've not done a, I'm trying to think when the last proper gravel vehicle was. Well I mean, Knox. Bit, I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's been a while. Yeah. So the, the last option, option D, is a, a bomber ship. So we, we have the Hercules A2, which is coming this patch. Uh, that obviously carries very big bombs. Very. Or it's a collection of smaller yeah, bombs, but bombs. it is our only dedicated ground bomber. We have bombers like the Retaliator mm. and the Clips, but they're more torpedoes. This, is, this would be another single man, get in, get out, drop your bombs, job. Um, so nice. Nice. I know I've kind of said I like all of them, but for, for, like... I think the visual aesthetics of the bombers is kind of like the single seat bomber. They just look, they just look cool. I think the hover vehicle for me. Yeah, oh, I'll go for the uh, the explorer ship at the start because I like that. I like big ships. I cannot lie. <laughs> do you know? I was wondering if you were going to do it. And you <laughs> it's did. going in my head. Yeah, so I was like, yeah. Uh, do, I, do I stop with this? No. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I think a nice big explorer ship that you can have all your friends on board because that's really. Where you have the, the huge amount of fun with Star Citizen yeah. is getting a group of friends together yeah. and just yeah. going off I just think and causing chaos. Visually, the small little, small little uh, <coughs> kind of compacts are cool. But, yeah. Can we have them all, John? Maybe. I guess we'll find out. If we, if we do get like a perfect yeah. split on the votes, yeah. like Jason come back to be like, well, actually. Def definitely don't go down and trying to split the votes. Yeah. So we have to make them all. Just double it, your team, Ben. Double the team. It could happen. I'll try. It. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's a a little wrap up at the end of the uh, the show. So mm -hmm. obviously it would have been easier to do this in person, but the the world we live in doesn't allow that at the moment. Hopefully next year, but mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jared will come on in a minute and explain how to vote for these. Uh, leave your comments and suggestions on them, and we'll we'll see what happens. That's a wrap for us. I'm John. If you don't realise, I'm the vehicle director. I'm Ben. Uh, first season con done. Woo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the club. Yeah. yeah. And I'm Paul Jones, art director. And thanks for watching our, our ship talk panel.